All right. Well, happy Thanksgiving week to everybody. Um, just a couple things. First of all, I want to congratulate all the teams playing for state championships uh, here. It's wish I could be a part of it. Wish I could go out and watch and celebrate uh, their excellence. But I want to make sure that we uh, congratulate them. I want to congratulate Coach Walker and the women's soccer team making the Elite Eight. That's a really big deal in our house, and we're very excited for them. I want to congratulate Coach Cook and the women of Nebraska volleyball for being Big Ten champs, and I look forward to them making their run. So uh, it's great, great to be here, great to be a part of so many excellent teams and be a part of such a great athletic department. Um, when it comes to this Friday, I, I just uh, – before, I know you guys will have lots of questions. Um, I just want to express my, my deep, deep, deep gratitude for the 24 – probably about 24 guys that we're going to – they're going to walk out on Friday and um, – as seniors, uh, so a couple guys are still because of COVID. You know, so some guys are still making some decisions up. But um, you can't do this uh, this job without buying from players. And these players, um, well, I think they've bought into us. More importantly, I think they care deeply about Nebraska, Nebraska football. And um, you know, when when I see Ethan Piper, um, when I see Nick Henrich limp off the field the other night, they've given us everything. They've absolutely given us everything. And um, I'm just very, very, very grateful. I'm also grateful for all the student workers. You know, um, you know I asked if, if they could be honored in similar ways. You know, uh, we have equipment managers that ride six, seven, eight hours on buses, um, student recruiting workers, student operations workers, student uh, nutrition workers, um, other areas. Um, so I'm just really grateful for all those young people and all the things that they do to allow us to have a chance to play the game. So uh, with that, you know, I'll just uh, see what questions you guys have. Coach, yeah. what's, what's your approach on the short week? How do you kind of approach this week, maybe with the time of year you're at right now, compared <clears throat> to, say, other short weeks you've had to tackle this year? Yeah, it'll, it'll be just, just like Illinois. You know, obviously Illinois coming off of Michigan. We went out and practiced that Sunday. We didn't practice last night. We met. We watched the tape. You know, we got back late. I wanted the guys to go home and sleep and – uh, but we, we met, we went over the game tape from, from Saturday night, um, got started with the guys on their Iowa prep. They'll be in tonight. Um, they'll practice tomorrow. We'll practice tomorrow morning. You know, there's no school Wednesday, so we'll practice Wednesday morning. I'll cut the guys loose, let them go home if they're local, bring them back Thursday uh, at some point, walk through and have a normal week. So it'll be very similar to what we did against Illinois with the same amount of practices. You have a listing of 11 guys on the roster who are seniors and the 24 who are juniors. You said there's going to be 24 who might watch over the wall. How do you, how do you help them make those decisions? And do you kind of know those those juniors who you think are, are going to go ahead and say this is this is the end of the game? Yeah, they've all. They, I mean, they've all said. You know, they've already. You know, they 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 they've already said to Susan and Kier, hey, I'm walking. I'm not walking. I've had several come in to me, say, Coach, you know, what do you think I should do? Um, in terms of mainly those ones are the ones who, you know, have a, have a chance at the NFL. And, um, but to each one, it's their own personal decision. Some guys, you know, they, they might walk this week, but they still haven't made their mind up. They want to kind of get to the end. So um, it's really important for me that we just kind of allow each one to do what they want. But, you know, we have, you know, we have some guys that might say they're a junior, but they're really in their fifth year. It's really it's a unique time. I mean, I don't, sometimes I don't know. You know, I said to Fedoni, I called him a sophomore, and he goes, well, technically I'm a freshman, so te technically he is. So, um, but so yeah, but, but it's just with each one. You know, I'm, I'm available to these guys, and that's really been our message all the time. We're never going to give them advice that's not in their best interest, and really never going to give them advice other than just to give them facts and information. One of the hard things about making the pro decision, and I ran into this last year with Garrett Nelson, is you can't get a, you can't get a pre-draft grade for a COVID year. So if I'm a third-year player and I'm going into my fourth year, I can apply to the NFL and they'll give me uh, a, dra a, a draft grade. If I'm a fourth-year player trying to decide if I want to come back for a fifth year and that's a COVID year, they won't do it for that. So, I mean, luckily for us, you know, we obviously have a lot of connections. We'll ask guys where, you know, where they see guys. We'll try to give them an idea, and then guys can make their own decisions. I'll just say yesterday I started the day off with, um, you know, you come back, you lose a game like we lost in overtime. It's the third time that – on the last play of the game, the game was decided. You're hurt for your guys. And then, you know, I had guys walking in saying, Coach, I, I want to come back next year and play again. And uh, I had recruits calling me saying, Coach, I want to come there. So um, it, was, uh, it, was really, it was really a great day from that regard. But it's uh, each guy's kind of making their own mind up. And I would probably pr produce that list right now, but 
I know some guys, they might change their mind over the course of this week, so I want to be respectful of that for them. A guy like Quentin and Ty, they can get grades because they're, they're, they're fifth-year juniors or whatever. Well, no, oh, Quint, Quentin's, Quentin's done, so he doesn't get – he just goes into the process. Ty, um, Ty wouldn't be able to get a grade as far as I know because um, – uh, he's he's you know he's not a junior. He's he's used his eligibility. That's kind of what happened with Garrett last year, and even the grades. I mean, the grades are like you know, first, second, you know, maybe, I think I can't remember if it's third or go back. But you know, if they give 80 guys a third round grade, <laughs> there's not 80 guys in the third round, so you have a tendency to slip. So it really depends on how many people actually go into the market. Um, if that makes sense. So how much is a <clears throat> this bowl game situation? How much? Of that, of that as a motivator for you and for the players? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm motivated every week. Um, you know, I, I think it would be great for our program. You know, it would be great for our young players. It would be great for our older guys. I know our, our older guys are, are motivated. Um, I've never, you know, I mean, I, I think, you I mean, look at the last three weeks. You know, we get knocked down, we get right back up, you know, and they come back each week. And so, uh, I don't think there's any question. I don't think there's any question of you know that they're motivated to try to get it done and try to get this win. And um, like I said, when we were at five and three, you know, I didn't want to just win one more. I wanted to win them all. We're sitting here at five and six. I don't. I want to win. I, I want to win each week. I truly believe it when I say go one and zero each week. But I know they want to win. They they want they want you know. I mean, to think that they're sitting here at senior day. There's a lot of these guys. It's their last game in the stadium. They're playing a ranked team. Chance to go to a bowl game. Um, if they lack any motivation, it's all there for them. But uh, I've seen this. I've seen this group do nothing but fight every, every week all year. Did, uh, did Chuba come out of uh, Saturday's game pretty good health wise? What's what's the situation with him? He's, he's healthy. Yeah, he's good. How, how do you feel? He uh, does he kind of look back at it, watched it back again, and how he performed? I thought Chuba played really well. Um, you know, he came in on Sunday, and he and I sat down, and you know. Um, I think the thing that takes you from good to great is when you when you uh, when you go back and look and say, hey, what are the plays I could have done? You know, what, you know, not just concentrate on things you did well. There's maybe four or five, six plays where, you know, first progression is not there. He maybe he scrambles and the backside in cuts wide open and and you know, but a couple more reps, you know, over the course of the season, maybe he gets back to that a little easier. But I thought he was in command the whole game. I thought he protected the ball. I thought he had great energy. I thought. He was making a lot of good decisions, um, and you know, you know um, I, I, I harken back to like the Minnesota week. Like, you know, if you look at our scout team for the Minnesota game, like Chuba was the quarterback, Emmett was the tailback, and those guys the last two weeks have taken us down on drives with a chance to win the game. So, um, there's always something, uh, there's always things to get better at. But I thought overall, I thought Chuba, um, I thought he was a real spark in the game. Several times in, in the sorry, um, in the past few weeks about wanting the quarterbacks to, to kind of just play and not think too much. Um, in that in that regard, how did you feel Chuba did um, as far as like making quick decisions and, and not you know allowing the not allowing things to get too big for him? I thought he did a really nice job of that. Um, um, I didn't think he predetermined anything. You know, I thought he came out and. Um, you know, I, I, you come out in that game, right? They're a, they're a four down team. They came out and they were playing basically like what amounts to like a nickel three four to, to our big people. And he just played the plays, got the ball in the perimeter of Billy uh, when it was there. Um, they went back kind of after the first two drives to the four down stuff. I thought he played the plays. Um, like I said, there's maybe four or five plays. I think, but I think for every quarterback, there's always four or five plays. So, um, I, but I thought, I thought Chubba just kind of was in the moment. He just kept playing the play, playing the play. I mean, that's, the one thing I said to him, like late in the fourth quarter, was like, "Hey, just don't try to win the game. Play the play, right?" I know how badly he wanted to win the game, but the way you win the game is is by playing each play as it comes. And um, there were a lot of really good, really good plays that he made, and that you know gave, gave us a chance. You know, on the road in the crowd noise, in the cold, um, I thought I thought he looked like he he was comfortable. Given the fact that he played well, what did he have to work through just to get to the point to play? Because the way that he played would indicate that maybe he could have played earlier if he wasn't hurt. So what did he have to go through just to get to the point where he could play? Well, I think, um, I, th you know, I think when you see someone have success, it usually, um, it usually stems from their ability to overcome some sort of adversity. So, you know, um, 
I think he's learned. I think he's learned and grown a lot over the course of this year. Um, I'll let them speak. I'll let Chuba and Heinrich and them speak about, you know, the things they've endured in their time to college. I don't want to speak for them, but I think, um, you know, I think coming into this year, um, you know, they, you know, I challenged Chuba a lot in the spring. I challenged him in the fall. As I've said, if you go back to my statements, I, I thought he was having a great camp and he got banged. He got hurt. He's gotten healthier and healthier and healthier. Um, you certainly see the speed that he has. And uh, he's got moxie and toughness. So um, I told him before the game, not after the game, I told him before the game, you're going to play well. And you're gonna, people are going to say, why didn't you play earlier? And, you know, I showed these guys a lot of different videos. I showed them Kobe Bryant. I showed them, you know, over the last couple weeks, it's been Kobe Bryant, like going through adversity to become a great player. I think Chuba has endured, you know, some of the physical adversity and then not playing and gotten just better and better and better. He's played on the scout team. He's taken the reps when we've given them to him. And so when he went out there, I thought he played free and just kind of played the play. So um, I don't know if I'm answering your question, but I, I you know, I kind of told him that ahead of time because I, I knew he was going to play well. And uh, um, I could see that when he went out there too, last week. I could see that in practice this past week. Is there any specific challenge in the spring? I mean, you say you challenged him in the spring. Was, was there anything specific? Yeah, you know, um, I mean, he was just pretty far down on the depth chart, you know, and um, um, yeah, he, he just, uh, I'll let him speak on it more. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to say anything that, you know, I just, uh, I just challenged him a lot, you know, and um, he, he answered the call. I mean, he's, he's a, he's a fighter. He's not a quitter. He's a fighter. And um, he got better in the spring. I thought he really got better over the summer. I thought he got better in camp. I thought he suffered some adversity in camp. I thought throughout the course of this year, you know, he's, you know, we've given him some chances and some practices over the course of the year. Um, but I thought, you know, when he went in the game, you just saw, you know, you saw kind of, you saw what you see, you know, what he does on the scout team. Honestly, when he gets the scout team, he runs around, makes plays, plays free. I thought he played free. And then this week with pressure, with a whole week of preparation, with a game plan, with all these different things, he went out and played the same way. So. You know, you've heard me talk about guys killing the bear, you know, like overcoming that thing that holds us all back. I thought maybe, he's, maybe he did that through the course of the week. Maybe he'll sit up here and tell you. That's what I'm saying. He might say something different. I'm, I don't tell our players what to say. He might say, like, Coach Rule's messed up and should have played me all along. Um, you know, him and Heinrich are best friends. You know, let, let Heinrich tell you what he's been through to get to this point. You know, like, you know, also, you know we're sitting at the game and, people, you know, everyone's happy about Chubba. Like, you know, Heinrich was 5-3 and three as a starter for us, too. I, you know, didn't get to finish that last game. You know, ask ask him about his journey to get here. So, I'm I'm proud of all the guys. You know, when they go out to represent us, they I can't tell you how hard guys work. You know, and um, really proud of Chuba. Like you know, he could have folded, he could have quit, and he has never done that. And that's uh, to me, you know, that's the that's the mark of a guy who ends up being a good player. What stands out to you about Iowa's defense? Everything. <laughs> I mean. You know, they're giving up in Big Ten games, they're giving up like I think it's like twelve point eight points per game. I mean they're giving up three three yards a rush. They don't give up big plays. Um, but it's all together, right? Like, you know, so the thing about Iowa is when people try to talk about Iowa, they want to talk about like the defense and the special teams. But oh, if the offense no, that's not how it works. Like they, they know who they are. They have a formula. It's integrated football, right? Like they've punted the ball fifty six times in Big Ten play. They're gonna I mean it's like you know, like I go play like when I was in the NFL, we play like the, the the Parcells Belichick guys, right? They kick the opening kickoff down, they wouldn't kick it through the end zone, they kick it to the three and make you return it to the 15, and then they start just playing the field against you, and that's what these guys do as well as anybody. Uh, but but they're dominant up front, they get off blocks. Um, you know, Coach Parker, they've been, they've been playing that defense forever. Like the minute you line up and you 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 run a stem, they know they know they've eliminated it from like 50 routes down to three. They're great at what they do. Um, uh, and they have really good players, and they play really hard, and they and they can pressure you, and um, you know they're going to control the clock on offense, and they're going to run the football on offense. And they're not going to beat themselves. When you look at us, a lot of statistics are similar on offense and on defense, um, but they only have 12 turnovers in Big Ten play, so they they've protected the ball better than we have over the course of the year. But uh, great players uh, across the board, great scheme, uh, really physical, stop the run force you into bad decisions and, and then eventually they make a play and like they're so comfortable in a in a seven three game. You know what I'm saying? Like they're so comfortable in a ten nine game. Like their their heart rate doesn't go up and they've been doing it for a long time. They're kinda of built that way and 
our guys are getting used to it. You know, the last couple of games have been like that for us. They've been doing that a long time. They've had some the drama with their coaching staff with Kirk's son being dismissed at the end of the year. I mean, in your time from your head coach at Baylor, or excuse me, Temple till now, have you noticed ADs taking a much more hands-on role when it comes to that? No one ever has with me, um, so I can't say that. All I'll say is um, I can't tell you how much respect I have for Brian Ferentz and Kirk Ferentz, that they've never let it be about anything other than their team. So great coaches, great leaders. Protect those they lead and stand out front and take arrows and take slings and take, you know, and that's what they do. And, um, I mean, I love my, my, my kids are up here at work today. I love my kids more than anything. I can't imagine Coach Ferentz, you know, and uh, Brian, and you know, I, I, I know Brian. I don't, I know, I don't know Brian personally well. I tried, I've tried a couple of times, like you know, thought about trying to hire him in the NFL if I could. You know, I mean, he's one of the great, great, great offensive line coaches, tight end coaches, run game. I mean, he's, he's done a great job for many years. I just have so much respect for that family and what they've done and how they've banded together. You, you, you've been in rivalry games before at college level. Mm -hmm. what, what have you heard about the Heroes game, the Iowa and Nebraska rivalry, and how much this means, not just inside the building but outside? Um, you know, I don't get outside the building very much, but I've definitely that's definitely something I've felt since I've gotten here. Um, I know how much it means to our players. You know, obviously last year I, I took the job here the night before the game and or the morning of the game. I can't remember how exactly it played out. Probably the night before, I think, and then watched the game and, and saw that. So, um, you know, I, I think uh, I think it has it has it has a tr tremendous impact, obviously, on the community, on the team, and all those things. Um, for me, you know, the game's about these seniors. Uh, the game's about our team. Um, I love them. I care deeply about them. I'm grateful for them, and I want to see them win. I know you went back and watched all the games last year and the practices, but what, what, what kind of a watchful eye did you have as you watched that game live last year? What do you remember about that? Yeah, and, and, you know, the job had been open for a while, so, like, kind of all the jobs that were open, you know, we were kind of watching them each week, you know, when they were on TV, you know. Uh, some some teams weren't always on TV, but this you know this, uh, Nebraska is always on TV, so we watch it every week. But I just remember um, that game, just how free and loose they looked, how explosive they looked. You know, tr you know, again, you look at this defense. You know, Trey Palmer hitting a deep ball. They don't they don't give those up very often, and so that you know obviously he's a great player. And um, but I just remember seeing the guys play, and I remember watching the video afterwards. You know, seeing Garrett Nelson crying as he exited the field, and just you know how much that meant to those guys personally. Illinois game, you mentioned, I think it's the old Pat Riley phrase, the innocent climb. Do you see players kind of believing, buying into that or seeing that, even though you haven't got the results one of the last two weeks? Like you mentioned yesterday, it was kind of seemed like an uplifting day to you to have guys come in and say, I want to be here next year. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would I would say that if uh, my, my gut, I mean, if, you, if, you, if you did an autopsy and you cut open the football program here, it's as healthy as it could be. And guys are as feel as invested in, as poured into, and as coached and as developed as possible. Um, so, you know, uh, I wish we, I wish, I wish, I wish we'd have blocked the kick against Maryland and won the game. You know, I wish we would have, I wish we would have, you know, won the game in overtime the other night. Um, you know, those results would probably be more tangible to you know, our guys would feel better to be more tangible to the outside world. I get all that. But the development is the development, and the improvement is the improvement. And more than anything else, players want to know that they're getting better. You know, um, like the transfer portal is going to open up all across college football, and so many people are going to be making a decision about their current – is another situation better based upon how much they're playing? And my statement to guys is always, how do you want this to end? You know, like when you're a senior, what, do you want to be an NFL player? Are you trending towards that direction? Not – your current state, but are you improving and developing? And so I think our team, you know, I don't think I've ever stood up here with you guys and said, like, hey, you know, geez, we got this guy's hurt, that guy's hurt. I mean, I'm actually proud that when we put the third quarterback in, you guys say, well, how come? I mean, that means we probably are practicing pretty well. We're probably doing some things well. Like, I'm proud that we put Justin Evans Jenkins in or Teddy Prohaska in. And, and, and I mean, Teddy, start, Teddy missed all of training camp. He's out there playing left tackle against Wisconsin in the, in the, in the crowd noise. And, so I, you know, and he's playing pretty well, you know. So I, I just think, you watch Jalen Lloyd. I mean, on the bye week, Jalen and I and his parents were deciding if he should play or not, or if he should redshirt. And now Jalen's hitting <laughs> seeing balls for touchdowns. And so when we talk about buy-in from parents, talk about buy-in from players, talk about so. Um, 
I, I couldn't be happier about where we are. I couldn't be angrier about our record, if that makes sense. And uh, two things can be true. Um, two things can be true. You said, and I, I know there's some obvious things that happen. You said it'd be great for the program to reach a bowl game. What, what would be great about it in your mind? The number one thing is the practice. Uh, we need the, we, the reps, the practice. Like, I think, uh, I think like Shake Shack's about to be a really, uh, Jason's about to be a really good player. I think, you know, Ruquan Buckley's been making the move over to the offensive line. Um, he's going to be a dynamic guard, I think. I, I want to get him another month of playing O-line. Um, obviously, there'd be the, hey, you know, we got there for the first time in however many years to, for everybody else. And, and, I, and I, I get that. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me. But um, to me, it's about the reps and the development and the opportunity to go compete again. But more importantly, it's about winning the game to get there. Like, we got to go win the game. You know, I mean, um, you know, you wake up on Saturday morning before the uh, Wisconsin game and you're watching other games and they're putting up the Big Ten West and we're in second place to start the day. But we didn't win, so you don't get to stay there. And so I want our guys to win one of these, uh, these games so that, A, they know that they've achieved it. B, we get to practice. C, we can move some guys around and try some things. Like, if you think about it, like, we went to Wisconsin – and our punt returner was a true freshman, and our kick returner was a true freshman, who's actually redshirting this year. So give me another month to practice with those guys. Um, you know, that's, to me, the, that's the benefit. It's the guys who are playing, but it's also, Steve, the, the players who are redshirting because, you know, when you're redshirting or you're not playing a ton, you know, you start to say, like, am I, you know, am I good enough? Am I going to – when you start to have a vision of, man, they, 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 they know I can play. They know what I can do. Like, can't wait for you guys to see Dylan Rogers. Can't wait for you guys to see DeAndre Barnes. You know, Jeremiah Charles played for the first time. It's still his red shirt year. I love, I mean, those guys are going to be excellent. I can't wait for you guys to see Bryce Turner. So another month with those guys would be great. But most importantly, um, to go win the game, you know, to go win a game and earn it, I think would be, it's, it's, it's what good teams do down the stretch. Hey, Coach, you mentioned December 4th, that portal late. How, how do you and other coaches manage next week? I mean, is it pretty stressful to kind of sit down with your team and kind of figure out what's going to go on with your players before that December 4th date hits here? Yeah, I, don't, I, I honestly don't see any of it as stressful. Um, I 100% am in this position to help young people say that they had a better life because they played for me. That's 100% why I do it. You guys might not, people might not believe that, but it's 100% why I do it. Um, I just, just, I could be home sitting out and be in the job cycle right now and probably be okay. I love it. I love being around young people. It's been one of the best years of my life. And so if someone, if one of our players' life is going to be better for having gone somewhere else, you know, like, hey, you know what, coach, I really want to play. I don't think I'm going to play. I'm going to help them. I'm going to help them. Um, you know, now there's an added thing nowadays where sometimes, you know, other teams are trying to buy your players. Like, you know, it happened last year. And I don't know if some of those players who left because they got more money somewhere else, if they got money somewhere else, I don't know if that was the right thing for them. When I look at the stats sometimes, maybe that wasn't the right thing for them. But my job, just like my kids, like my son's decided where to go to college. I don't tell my son, you have to come to UNL. I said, well, go look at South Dakota State. Go look at – he makes the decision, right? So – um, I look at next week as an unbelievable opportunity to sit down with players um, and talk about w what you see with them and what you see that they can be. Um, I, I, don't know if, I don't know if young people get that enough, right? Like, you, you know, I'm going to sit down with every single player, you know, walk on scholarship and just talk about, you know, where I see them, what I think they can do, and then have them talk to me. Hey, Coach, the good thing for me is, you know, most of these guys I have that kind of relationship with already where I'm already sitting down with them. But it might be right for someone to go somewhere else. It might be right for uh, someone to sit here and just fight it out and tough it out. So um, I have those conversations, though, uh, Sean, all year long. Like, I, you know, like, like with Jalen, like Jaden Doss, I mean, James Williams last week. We have those conversations all year long with everybody. I'm having them with seniors today. Um, and uh, so we'll have them next week. I bet you most guys will want to stay here. It's a, it's a really great place to be. It's a really good program to be in. And if, some, if it's not right for somebody, then we'll help them with all that we have. How do you handle the other side of that? I know how you answered it in the spring when the portal was about to open, but every team has needs, and I'm sure you have to, you obviously have to look at who's available. So what's your approach with that as you balance your own team and finishing the season and, you know, whatever else is ahead? Yeah, I think, um, I think you know, you're always recruiting, and part of recruiting now is 
the transfer portal. I don't think you see very many teams. I mean, I think we've kind of – there's some teams, like, there's, there's two there, – there's, like, there's two stages of this, right? There's teams where you hire – like, so when I, when I left Temple to go to Baylor, I mean, it was even in my contract that I couldn't take even a player that we had offered or recruited to Baylor. Then coaches started bringing their commitments to schools, which used to be a no-no. Now coaches are leaving, and they're taking their roster with them. So, you know, um, which I'm not here to judge anyone. Like, I came here – like I said to you guys before, I, I, if I could have brought Brian Burns and Frankie Lou, who everyone would be pretty happy right now, I just didn't get a chance to do that, right? <laughs> um, and if you notice, we didn't take anybody from Baylor. Like, you know, like we didn't bring anyone from Baylor. Like, I, there's, there's an ethic thing that I'm going to always do. Uh, but anytime someone comes in the portal, if, if they come in, there, we're always going to look at every single thing. But we're going to build the base of what we do with a homegrown roster and then supplement it and add to it when time comes, when need be. So... I don't think there's anything wrong with the portal. It's not. I just don't know how many teams are winning by bringing in 25 guys, right? You know, I just think that sometimes that can create cause a little chaos. What we want to do is build a roster and nucleus of guys that are all here that understand what we're doing. And then when a guy comes along, it might be five one year, it might be one one year, it might be ten. I don't know that answer. Um, but I love high school recruiting, and I love getting guys here, and I love having them for four or five years. And um, what I don't want to do is I don't ever want to, just have a short-term fix. Um, we're in the building phase right now. Someday when we get to the, you know, you know contending phase, whatever that is, that, that might be the time. I'm, I'm learning this as I go, though. Don't, please don't take my, my kind of the way I say this as like I have it figured out. Like I don't think – I've got coaches calling me, like friends of mine that are up for other jobs. They're like – they're asking me questions. But I'm, I don't think anybody has it all figured out. I mean, it's changing by the day, too. Back to you. You mentioned the coach is calling me. I mean, how do you how do you advise your assistants? It's a good problem to have when you have assistants that are on hot boards and things. Go get like a that. job. How do you advise them to handle it while the season's still going on? Go get a job. I, I told Tony. I mean, search firm called me asked for Tony's number. I said yes, you should hire Tony White. Tony White should be a head coach. He's excellent. Um, I told Tony, don't take the wrong one. <laughs> you know, the, like there's like don't take the wrong job now. Like don't take a job with no resources. Don't take a job with no support. Don't take a job without a great recruiting base. Don't take a job, hear me now when I say this, this is, this is deep, where the expectations outlay the commitment. Like, uh, like you know, I, if, if I want to be in great shape and I work out one day a week, okay, you want to be a 10-win team and you're spending, you're, you're spending at the middle of your conference, okay, the, the expectations. So I do that with all my guys because um, it's like the players. I mean, I want them to want to be here. And I also want them to advance. I don't want, I don't want guys who only want to be here, you know. And I've, I've brought guys back, you know. Like when I see like Elijah Robinson at a and I get proud, you know. Evan Cooper's been with me, but you know he left and went to Miami and came back and worked for me again. So, um, you know, in season, I mean, <laughs> we have so much time. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying we have so much time. Um, you know, our coaches are here at night. They're here. They have guys that show up at four in the morning. Not me. We have guys at night, like you know. Our guys are professional. They would never, ever put anything but the players first. But, yeah, anybody that's called me about Tony as a head coach, I've said, yeah, give him a shot. And I tell Tony, pick the right job. Don't pick the wrong job because we're going to be good on defense here for a while. You know, um, the stark reality, and maybe people like it, maybe they don't, is everywhere I've been, we've had a good defense. And everywhere I've been, we've had kind of a middle-of-the-pack offense. We're not quite middle-of-the-pack yet on offense. I'd like to get to be more dynamic. I've never had athletes like this. Wait till Malachi and Jaden and Quentin and all these guys grow up. I think we're going to be pretty darn good. But um, we're going to be really good on defense for a while if Tony decides to stay. If he gets a head coaching job and he wants to take it, I'm going to hug him, love him, wish him the best, and then we'll continue to play good defense. Do you think the defense has been good long enough to where if, 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 if a guy like that doesn't take a job in this cycle, they're going to be again there in the next cycle? 100%. Do you mind saying why you think Tony's ready? Um, because I'll say this, being a coordinator and being a head coach, I say that, uh, you might have heard me say this before if you did, forgive me. It's similar, but it's about like the difference between being um, a cardiologist and an oncologist. You know, if they diagnose you with cancer, you're not going to go see the cardiologist. But you both went to medical school. You both did all the training. Like <laughs> the things that come across my desk every day, very few of them are, have anything to do with, uh, you know, the weak side ISO. They have to do with... Everything but, you know, and they have to do with players and, and the, the, now the portal. I mean, it has to do with all this other stuff. Um, so I think you have to have this 
knowledge of football that allows you to always, you know, painting a picture for the guys of how we want to win. You have to have a philosophy that's embedded that doesn't sway when the results aren't there. You have to be a person who cares about people and has relationships and genuine relationships, not just relationships with the people who could do something for you. And you can't be this. You have to be this, right? And I see that from Tony. And you know, I see him just being able to say, even keel, you know, the same guy every day. You know, um, like I said, Joey McGuire was Joey McGuire worked for me. He's done a great job at Texas Tech. Never been a coordinator, but he's a head coach. So I think, I think I see all those things from Tony. Um, I hope he gets an opportunity. We don't have enough um, uh, coaches, coaches of you know uh, diverse um, uh, backgrounds. Um, but as much as anything, I think he's just really smart. And I think we have other guys on the staff who are ready to be coordinators. I think we have other guys who are ready to be head coaches. Um, so if he gets an opportunity, unbelievable for him. But make no mistake, being a great coordinator has nothing to do with being a good head coach. Um, it, has, it, it has everything else to do with everything else, in my opinion. Hey, can you speak to um, during the season, uh, in the off season, what you guys do as an offensive staff to drill some of those late game situations like if you're playing for three, if you're playing for seven, how you work timeouts, how you work clock management, just the stuff that you guys do so that when you get in those moments, the, the, you're prepared. And I, I'll be frank. I'm assuming you're, you're referring like I probably should have called the timeout earlier, right? right so no, I, I'd, 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 rather, I'd rather address it directly than not. You know, as I, as I said after the game, you know, for me, it was really important in that game that um, – I gave the defense that I gave the defense a chance to win the game, you know, because too many times we haven't given the defense a chance to win the game. So when you look at it from an outsider's perspective, and you haven't seen the Minnesota ending, you haven't seen the ending last week. Yeah, from a from a traditional perspective, I completely understand it um, because we had missed one earlier, because we have a freshman kicker, because it was cold, because of all those different things. You know, I wanted to make sure I got the ball down in a certain area. Um, I also didn't want to kick because we didn't get that third down. I didn't want to give them the ball with 40 seconds left because if you go back to last week, what happened? They went down and they kicked a field goal. So um, I didn't want to throw an interception in the end zone. I mean, you know I'm saying I didn't want to. I didn't want to. I, I wanted to be conservative to get the first down. Make sure we had the first down. Not give them time to go on and kick it. Kick the field goal. I thought we were playing really well on defense and we would stop them in overtime and win the game. Or we'd have a chance. Let's say, hey, make sure we have a shot at the end zone. If I could go back, like I said, after the game, I would have, have called the timeout with 30 seconds and had two shots in the end zone. I don't know, I don't know for us how many shots we're going to hit from like the 18 to 20 yard line. Um, so I say all that to say you make those decisions based upon your team, right? So in the offseason, we do it based upon other teams and the analytics. And, you know, the analytics told me to go for it on fourth and two on the previous drive. Um, my gut was to punt the ball down that we were going to stop them. That was right. Um, my gut was uh, Michigan State. It said to go for them fourth and seven. You know, that's what the analytics said. I punted the ball down. We got the stop. So, you know, I think sometimes you have to take – I take the analytics. You know, they, they give it to me. And I also kind of take what we have. Um, and, you know, I'll be perfectly honest with you. Like, we get that ball to overtime. We have them third and ten. We have them third and eight. And, unfortunately, we just don't make the play. But I stood in front of the team and said, hey, guys, if I, I wish I would have called that timeout with 30 seconds and given you – two shots. In terms of practicing it, we, we practice those things every Friday. We practice those things every Thursday, um, you know, either or. We practice them all off season. Um, I think when you see a quarterback who's been on the scout team not get a ton of reps and he takes the ball from the 93 or the 94 and drives it down, it's pretty good coaching by Sat and, 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 and uh, Garrett and all those guys. We took the ball down last night, you know, with three minutes left and there's just a fine line there of Hey, let's score. Let's guarantee a field goal. Let's try to score a touchdown and end this game, but let's not give the ball back to them. Unfortunately for us, you know, again, I, I, said, I think I said it after the game, I had a lot of people say to me, why didn't you guys just run the ball the week before against Maryland? Because we would have, you know, kicked the field goal and um, given them the ball back with two and a half minutes left, you know, or two minutes left to have you kicked the field goal the week before. They got the ball back at the 25-yard, then they went down and kicked the field goal. So it's a fine line there in terms of balancing it. Um, you know, we go through all the different things. We have parameters that we use of when to use timeouts, when not. We use the analytics uh, outside service. We practice it. But in the end, you have to make a decision. And um, what I don't believe in is resulting. And that's when you, you balance your decision based upon how the result comes out. You make the best decision. If I could go back, I would have called the timeout with 30 seconds. I would have given them 
I'd have given them two shots. But what I didn't say after the game is, you know, really, you know, because after the game you're, you're pretty emotional. <laughs> I just did not want to kick that field goal with 45 seconds, make the field goal, and then give them a chance to go down and tie it. I mean, to go down, excuse me, win the game. I wanted to, I wanted to at the very least get it to overtime because I thought I was really starting to see our defense emerge. And, um, you know, we had two third downs that we gave up. We had a penalty on offense, you know, just, uh, just didn't make the plays. But I, as with everything else, I, all those things fall squarely on, on my shoulders. Like I'm, like I'm saying, I'd much rather answer it like directly like this. Like I, I told the team, I said, guys, I wish I'd have done this for you. I wish I'd have given you one more shot. Um, you know, that's, uh, that's part of all this. You know, I have players come into me and sometimes they have tears in their eyes. They say, coach, I wish I'd have done this. You know, we do the best we can. We come out the next week. But it was thought out. It wasn't like it was, uh, you know, just, hey, we don't know what we're doing. Um, I just felt like I owed it to our defense to, to guarantee that the game continued. Thank you. Good to see everybody. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Thank you.